Today's, today's Easter, eh? the day of resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah, yeah, this is the day of resurrection. So, do you believe Jesus died and rose from the dead? Do you believe in your almighty God and Savior? Do you want to surrender your entire life? Baptize you in the name of Jesus. Die with Christ. Hallelujah, God. Good morning, buddy Christ. Good to see you. It's a Friday morning. I'm kind of out of the loop and I'm kind of a little bit out of my normal swing of things. Um, I haven't posted a video in a while. That's one thing that hasn't happened. Um, you know, there's times like that I go through um, where just really learning to rest in God. Um, you know, I really ran hard for God the first three, four years of my life, and um, I, 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 but I felt inside a lot of the time I was trying to prove my love for God, like I was trying to earn His love, maybe. And, um, you know, recently, uh, God spoke to me about, about that, and, um, well, actually a year and a half ago, the Lord said, you've been work." he said this to me, I heard it in my spirit, so loud, and so mixed with his love, he said, Art, you've been running, and striving for me, no, I want you to rest, and watch what I can do for you, and, um, the series of events that's unfolded since that day is incredible. Um, you know, um, it's interesting. When we start to walk with God, you know, it, it almost becomes um, not what we can do for Him, but what He wants to do through us. And, and it's, like this, it's like this amazing uh, privilege that God gives His people that walk with him. Um, really your responsibility uh, of walking with the Lord is to enjoy is to enjoy God. And the chief end of man is to love and enjoy the, the fellowship and the presence of God, to stay connected to him. Um, Jesus says in the Bible, if you remain in my love, you will be, you will bear fruit. And so remain in me, remain in my love. And uh, sometimes we get way ahead of, of God's call and we just start running, right? Because we're like, oh, finally, I, I got it figured out. And then you go. And then you end up running out of his love and into works. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that um, salvation comes through faith and faith without works is dead. And by, it's all by God's grace that he does these things in our life. But um, so, I, you know, today we see a, a, lot, of, a lot of Christians kind of sitting and, and saying, well, it's not by works, it's not by works. Well, it's not by works that you were saved, but it's two good works that you are saved, uh, that you are being saved. Um, you are saved to a life of good works to produce fruit. And, um, you know, in my life, um, I've, I've been around a lot of different Christians, and I've seen a lot of people up and down in their faith, and a lot of people up and down in their obedience. And I've resolved firmly, even at the time where I was feeling really, really uh, having a really hard time with with the gospel and um, with with going out and producing fruit um, you know and actually seeking the lost and trying to find people on the streets and stuff like that um, I was having a real hard time with it but I knew that it was just my understanding was off and so I've really been crying up to God Lord just just resolve the internal issues that I have with surrendering to you and I'll just keep going um, there's been times of rest. I really rested, or times of rest. I guess times of getting my motives straightened out. Because if your motive isn't love, if your motive and the drive of your life isn't love for others, love love for God and love for your neighbor, um, you're gonna have you're gonna have a, a real rough struggle to to walk the walk. Um, so God has to settle our motives and. Um, that doesn't mean we wait till our motives are settled. We, we go and our, motive, our motives get settled in the process. So um, I just, uh, I want to encourage people out there. 
I was reading this um, this book, this little devotional this morning, and uh, this is really, really important. Um, I don't have the, the final verses to it, but um, here it's uh, 1 John 2, verse 4. And it says, The one who says, I have come to know God, and yet does not keep his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in such a person. And then it, I think it's like uh, a couple of verses later, it says, uh, If you say that you remain in him, you must walk as he walked. Um, 1 John 2, verse 4. And um, many, many people today um, are, are genuinely deceiving themselves, uh, living in sin. They, they don't believe that um, it's that big of a deal to God. I know Jesus paid for everything, but, but Jesus says, if, if you say that you know me, but you don't keep my commandments, um, you're a liar. And, and God speaks hard words to us. He doesn't play nicey nice. He plays love. Nice nice doesn't really do it. Not love does. Love love will fight for you and fight with you to overcome your your ignorance and your blindness. And um, I really I really so like it's so strong in my spirit now. And I'm I'm waiting for the time that God opens the doors for me to begin to speak and 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 teach in the local churches here about the surrendered life and walking in the power of God. Um, because these things are all necessary um, for you to maintain um, holiness. Uh, if you don't live radically, um, you're, you're naturally, you're, you're built to worship something. So if, if you don't uh, live a, more of a radical life for God, um, if, you're, if you're complacent and inactive, um, the Bible says, warn those who are idle, warn them. You know, stir them up to love and good works. And because um, we're naturally worshipers of, of, of something always. So if we're not worshiping God in spirit and truth and, and doing good things for other people and worship, you know, in worshiping him in that way, um, it's not about sitting in church and, and getting a message every Sunday. It's just not about that. It's about you being in tune with the Holy Ghost and receiving your guidance and direction from the Lord himself by the spirit. And so, like, there's so much more to this life than, than, than attending a church, than always feeding on a new message. Um, right now, what we need is more obedience. We don't need another message. We need to follow what God has already commanded us to uh, go out and make disciples. And um, my wife and I um, have really begun uh, this ministry in, in, a, in the privacy of our home. But people come and go, and even during our weeks, we, we do more ministry during our week than we do, you know, say on, on Sundays or on Saturdays, um, just, to, just to individuals, and um, we know the power of the gospel. See, this is another thing people don't, if you don't understand the power that the gospel it has to set the captives free, there's, we've got healing, we've got deliverance, we have water baptism. In the burial of the old life and then we have the filling of the Holy Spirit all of these things are are keys they're like tools in a tool belt for the Christian man to break the bondage of Satan over people's lives and to get them set free and in relationship and re reunited with their Creator so it's like dude we use these gifts to overcome the work of the enemy in our society in the life around us in the people's lives around us and um, you know, like this week we were dealing with a, with a young lady who's, who's dealing with all kinds of um, spiritual warfare. And, uh, you know, we just, we, just, we just go. We just drop what we have and we go and we talk with them and we pray with them. And we lead them. Okay, this is where God's pointing you. And get into the Word. Renew your mind. Um, you know, the, the lies of the enemy slip in where you don't know truth. So, and, the, and the devil always hides behind a lie. That's how he gets into your life. Um, where you are in the way that is right to a man instead of the way that is right to God. So we need his word. Um, so many Christians today, it's, it's like a battlefield almost every day when we're dealing with people in, in uh, Bible studies or people in um, just day-to-day -day life. Um, people are just overthrown and, and they don't know the true gospel because 
if anyone says, I have come to know God, yet does not keep his commandments and walk the walk of a commissioned disciple, he's, he's a liar. The, the, these are, these, this is a part of keeping his commandments. He says, go into all the world. This, these are his commands. And um, if we don't take up that cross, uh, we won't ever learn the true gospel. We won't ever know the true gospel. We won't even be able to teach it because we, we won't have experienced any of the truth. And, uh, you know, I can talk now out of my testimony. Like my, my entire life is a testimony that I know how to lead you to the Lord. I know how to lead you to freedom. And um, I can only do so much as well, the Holy Spirit. And if someone's truly seeking, we see so much change. Some of the, some of the people that we have baptized and have been filled with the Holy Spirit in the last couple months... Um, that are genuinely seeking. We see the light of Jesus Christ in them and the fire of God in them. And we see them calling out truth to people around them. And it's like, and then we see other people that we've we've baptized and led to the Lord. And they just, they just, they just don't seek. And it seems like they're always going through the same repetitive program, the same cycle, the same pattern. And, and like Jesus says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when people are caught in these cycles and patterns, it's usually because they aren't in the Word of God and they're not seeking God. They're just saying, well, woe is me. Here I am. I'm stuck. And I'm never going to be able to get free. It's not true. Remember when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was giving you a promise that if you seek Him, like, like we don't know the way through the battlefield. We don't know the way how to navigate this crazy life. We don't know the way through our problems, but Jesus, he can see the end before the beginning and he can see the beginning from the end and he can see it all as a, as a timeline right in front of him. He's outside of it. So he knows the decisions that you can make, but he knows the decisions that he would help you to make. And so if we just plug into to Holy Spirit and, 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 and read his word, it becomes a lamp to our feet. It becomes a guideline that begins to point us in the right direction. So I always just tell people, Okay, you don't know the, the answer. I don't know the answer to how to get through this. But, but God does. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. If we just cling and hold fast to him, he will walk you through every dark valley. Every And, and yes, you're going to have to hang on. There's going to be times where you're like, dude, I'm not sure if God's even here. I don't even know if he's real. There's going to be times where you're going to have to just walk in blind faith. There's going to be times where you're going to have to fast and you're going to have to pray in order to um, get a breakthrough. God wants you to seek him with all the tools that are in front of you and and then be around people who are walking the walk because they are the ones who have received grace, more grace. The people that are walking the walk are receiving more grace to know God better. They're receiving more grace It's because grace comes through faith. The ones who are walking the walk are ones who are walking by faith. They're doing the things God has commanded them to do. They're leading people to God. They're making disciples, teaching, admonishing, reproving, rebuking, and building up the body of Christ. And uh, it's a battle, man. Not everybody wants to change. Most people just want to come around and talk about what they know. And I'm finding out a lot of people don't know what they think they know. <laughs> so, so anyways, pray for us. Pray, pray, pray for our, our ministry. My wife and I, pray, pray for us. Pray for the Bible studies. There are some... There are some um, new people. Um, my brother Eric uh, just got born again last winter and, and baptized in water this spring. And uh, Holy Spirit landed on him in fire and uh, just being, just and just surrendering in obedience. God bless you, Eric. And I just pray you just keep running. And uh, there's other guys that are coming to the Lord um, in our Bible study and uh, people that. Um, have really just walked in their flesh for, for a long time. And so pray for us, pray for us for discernment, pray for us for uh, guidance, but that God would continue to raise up new men to just walk out the truth. Yeah, this isn't about attending church. This is about you becoming like Christ. This is about you learning to bring the, the message of freedom and Jesus to, to the world. And we can all do it. God is there. He's, he's here to equip us to overcome every darkness and every lie of the enemy. I'm going to sing you a song. I just want 
like to invite you to Saturdays, usually um, every Saturday uh, around noon, we'll, we'll cruise the, the streets, witness to people, pray for people, see people get healed, see people get the gospel. And also uh, right around two o'clock, usually um, on Main Street, either at the Bullville Square or down by uh, Bugwood Bean, um, usually play some guitar, sing some songs. <laughs> takes a little bit of boldness, but um, we're just singing the streets, shout Jesus from the mountains, and Jesus in the streets, and Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. 
And uh, we're not talking people. We're talking the devil. <laughs> He's corrupted many people. So we're going to break those strongholds. And uh, we're going to do it through worship. And uh, so join us, man. Uh, Saturdays, come find us after, after lunch. I'm on Main Street somewhere. So I'm trying to be as faithful with that as possible. Last week I wasn't there, but um, I was up, uh, up in Bell too. <laughs> Just letting out the gospel to the people up there at the lodge. Um, a Muslim guy that argued with us, his, his knee got healed. And uh, I'm in contact with him now through text message. He's, he was up there doing electrical work. And uh, everybody else there got prayed for and got the gospel in some way. So it was really good. Anyways... Um, you can do this. You're a light on a hill. Shining bright. So God bless you. Uh, maybe see you this weekend. Peace to you, my friend.